Hello, this is Mr. Bosma here from Colonial Christian School. I want to show you today how easy it is to do rocket science. No, really, rocket science. I have in front of you here a compiler. A compiler is a program that writes code for computers. And we're going to use simple algebra and pre-algebra and a little bit of geometry to make a single point gravitational field and simulate it on the computer. Let's start. The first command here is a screen command. It sets up for graphics. Now, let's place the Earth. Uh, it's 640 across. So I'm going to place the Earth here at 320. So it's halfway across. Let's place the Earth halfway down. Because the whole screen is 480, we're going to place the Earth at 240 down. Let's give the Earth an, a radius, too. ER for Earth radius. Let's set it at 5. That'll look good on the screen. Now, we're going to have uh, a satellite circling the Earth. And the satellite is going to be at x comma y. Uh, math guys like using x for how far right and left things are and y for how far up and down things are. So let's set x at exactly where the Earth is. And let's set y at where the Earth is. We'll say minus 100. So Remember, uh, higher numbers on a screen go down rather than up, like they do in mathematics. Now let's make a loop. This is a do loop. It'll go forever. And let's draw the Earth here. The Earth is going to be a circle at EX comma EY. Remember, X is how far left and right, and Y is how far up and down. And it's going to have a radius of ER. Let's give it a color, too. Colors are numbers in this language. So this is going to be color yellow. Uh, that looks pretty good. OK, let's paint it in. Uh, good color for the Earth. Let's make the Earth, we'll start painting at EX, EY. Let's make the Earth color six, which is uh, brown. And we'll stop it at color 14, which is yellow. Now, the way to make a, an animation, one of the simple formulas for it is to draw it, weight, erase it, and move it. So we're going to put the Earth in the center of the weight area. Let's draw the object. Here is our satellite. It's at x comma y. We'll give it a small radius of 2. And let's give this a color of 14 as well. So there, there's our small satellite. After we draw it, we have to erase it. So let's copy that down here. Make a little extra space there. And instead of color 14, we're going to erase it with black. So we'll draw right over the top of it with black. Let's see what it looks like right now. If you're seeing it's flickering, it's because we don't have a delay yet. Let's put the delay in. This is just a for loop, a for counts. Uh, let's count to delay. And we'll go back and we'll do the next one. Now, let's set our delay value up here. Good programmers like putting variables up at the top so everybody can find them easily. Here's the delay. I'm going to set the delay at. 10,000. That ought to work pretty well for the speed of my computer. Because it's up on top, you can change it easily. Let's see what it looks like animated. Okay, it's not moving at all, but it looks pretty good. Now let's give it a movement. 
once again, if we're conforming to what math people like doing, uh, usually dx is the speed x. Remember, x is horizontal, how fast it's going back and forth. So dx, let's set that at 0 0.02. Remember, the object's right above. So we could set dy at zero, and we'll just give it an initial push, and it will be traveling to the right. Let's try to see if it's, well, first of all, let's move it. Forget what I'm doing here. So here we'll say x is equal to x plus the speed x is changing. y is equal to y plus the speed y is changing. And let's see, it's moving and it's moving very, very slowly. Can you see it move? Okay. Maybe we ought to change the delay a little bit. See if a delay of a thousand makes it. There, that's a pretty smooth looking object. That it depend upon the speed of your computer and the way that you're running this program. Now, it's time to think about gravity. Let's put in a gravity constant. Why don't we put it below the delay there? We'll say the gravity constant for the Earth is 10. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Now we're gonna to have to calculate the distance. How far away are these things? Why the distance? Well, because when you're on Earth, gravity is 10. But if you're one radius or 4,000 miles up in the air, the Earth's gravity is a quarter of what it was before. Interestingly, you take the number of radiuses away that you are from an object and you square it and divide by that number to calculate how strong the gravity is. So if you're 4,000 miles, one radius away, it's a quarter. If you're 8,000 miles, that's two radiuses up from the Earth's surface, or three total radiuses, then it will be one ninth. So let's calculate that here. We'll, we'll figure out how far things are from each other. I'll make a variable here, distance, D-I-S-T, is equal to the square root, this is uh, the Pythagorean theorem. The square root of what? Uh, we'll say x minus ex, that's the satellite's horizontal minus the Earth squared, plus y minus the Earth's y, how far up and down each object is, the distance between them squared. And you take the square root of that, and that's the distance. The Pythagorean theorem is a very handy thing to have. Now we're, we're doing calculations here. So let's calculate gravity here. Now remember, gravity doesn't just go up and down when we're in outer space. It can go in all different directions. Single point gravitational fields. We have a two-dimensional object here. So it's going to go in two dimensions. So Let's figure out how much of the gravity is working in the horizontal direction. So we'll take the distance, distance x, it's going to be equal to how far the Earth is, x, minus how far the object is, x. That's how far away it is, x. Let's make distance y. And that's going to be equal to where the Earth is, EY, up and down, minus where the satellite is. So now we have distance X and distance Y. Now, we can make a ratio of that, and that'll tell us how strong the gravity is X and how strong the gravity is Y. Ratios are just sixth grade math, fifth, sixth grade math. Really easy stuff. So let's make a ratio, and we'll multiply by the gravity, and then we'll calculate how much to divide by. So here is gravity x. Gravity x is equal to, well, let's take the distance, distance x, and we're gonna divide by the total distance, and then we'll multiply by gravity. And that'll tell us how much of the gravity, how what portion of the gravity is traveling horizontal. But we're not done because gravity weakens. 
So let's go back to that. And we're going to divide all of that then. Divide all of that by the distance squared. So here's distance. How far away is it? To the power of two squared. Hmm. That's not too bad. Now that's GX, that's the gravity X, the horizontal gravity. So let's copy that and then let's make GY. Here is GY and we'll take the distance Y and we'll have the ratio of the distance Y to the total distance times the gravity divided by the distance squared. Now, down here we have x is equal to x plus dx. Let's modify dx and dy. Here's dx. dx is equal to what it was before. It's traveling at the rate of speed dx horizontally plus the gravity x, gx. And let's do the same with dy. How fast it's moving horizontally is equal to what it was before plus the gravity effect that we just calculated. Let's see how well it's working here. Ooh, I forget to put in my four next loop delay. No, let's change the delay. Ooh, something went wrong there. dy dx distance y distance x. And there we go. So we have a satellite circling the Earth. And hey, all we used, sixth grade math, a few ratios, some addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, truly, rocket science is not that bad. This is Mr. Bosma for Colonial Christian School. Go be smart.